What's up everyone, back for another beer review, and today I'll be reviewing yet another collaboration beer. This time between Revolution Brewing and Hot Butcher for the World, both of which are out of Chicago, Illinois. And this is their Maintains and Shapes. So they're calling this one an Illinois Recreational Lager whatever that means, comes in at 5.5% alcohol by volume, 35 IBUs at the time of review. This can is approximately three weeks old. And I'm gonna give a huge thanks and shout out once again to Hot Butcher for hooking me up with this one. I will post a link in the description box to the Beer Mountain Boxing video that, that contains all the goodies they sent my way. And uh, I was, it was unexpected to get not only this beer, but the other two collaborations that Hop Butcher did with Revolution. Um, you know, I expected when they sent the box to me to, to have some Hop Butcher goodies in there, but to have the three collaboration beers, pretty fantastic. Um, the other two are their base, which is a West Coast Palau, and their Superstructure, which is Imperial Hazy IPA. So um, really cool. I got a chance to try all of these. I really like what Revolution uh, does. I have not reviewed anything from Revolution on the channel, um, aside from a mystery beer. It was one of their uh, big beers, uh, their uh, Death Death Cafe, I believe, and uh, it was delicious, one of the best barrel-aged beers I had this year. Um, but yeah, anyway, I don't know what an Illinois recreational lager is, but this one is hopped with Zappa, Strata, and Experimental Hop 0692. Um, yeah, so I'm expecting like a somewhat hop forward lager, you know, like an IPL, something in that range. I don't know. We'll see. Let's crack this one open, get it in the glass, see what we got going on here. So yeah, pretty fresh beer. Good stuff. Let's go using the other half lager uh, glass because it's lager. Even if it's a half forward lager, it's still lager. Yeah, that's looking like a lager, no doubt. So we'll do something like that. Let's throw the can over here. Yeah, that looks like a lager, super crystal clear. Little dirty glass mafia on the other side that you might not see until the, bubble, yeah, the bubbles are gone out. But yeah, that is a lager through and through, crystal clear, has a yellow color to it. Some some people might say piss yellow. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, it has about a finger, finger and a half of this bright white sod sod subsy. Soap sudsy. Soap sudsy. I think that's the word. Um yeah, it's this paint. This, I mean, this looks like a lager. Just plain and simple, looks like a just your typical lager. Let's get a nose on it. Oh, a little bit more hot forward than I anticipated, although maybe I should have anticipated because I read off the hops. Very interesting. So I'm getting like a zesty citrus, like a very pithy, rindy, grapefruit, orange type of uh, peel going on. But then I'm getting this little like dank vegetal almost kind of hop character. <sighs> yeah, very earthy, dank green. Underneath it, nice like cereal-esque kind of quality to it. You know, typical... Um, yeah, typical malt character for a lager. Sweet cereal grain. That dank vegetal green thing's really cool. I, I did not anticipate something like that. It's almost verging on like marijuana, like almost there. A little bit of like skunky kind of note to it, but not not overly so. Yeah, it smells like it's gonna be super refreshing, albeit probably a little bit more hot for than your typical lager. Maybe that's what they mean by Illinois recreational lager. I don't know. Let's get into it. Cheers, everybody. And that stays with you on the taste. Man, it has this green, vegetal, earthy type of quality to the hops. Body on this one for 5.5%. This is like lower side of medium, almost straight on medium. It has a little bit more heft behind. This is not a light bodied beer. Um, it's not super thick or anything. It just has a good body for it for sub 6%. The mouth feels crisp, clean. Super refreshing, kind of what you want from a lager. The taste, though, right up front, that zesty, pithy, rindy grapefruit, orange, more of like a white grapefruit, more of a bittering grapefruit, hits me right at the forefront. Carries on through the palate, the sweet cereal grain type of note comes to the front of the palate, and it, and it kind of just stays there mid-palate, but then it transitions into that vegetal, earthy, green, almost marijuana-like dankness on the back of the palate. Super crushable. Nice balance between the sweetness. There's like a, a slightly dry finish and also a like mild to moderate bitterness. So it has a pretty good balance to it. 5.5% drinks like a 5.5% lager. Man, this is this is this is a dangerous, super crushable lager. It really is. What I like about this, I don't think I've ever had, and if I have had 
start my voice is trying to change with I don't know what just happened there I just hit puberty randomly anyway um what uh is cool about this beer is that I don't think I've ever had a beer with Zappa hops before I didn't even know those things existed um Strata yes the experimental six is uh, six zero six nine two hops yes but I don't know what this is but this just give me a unique kind of take on a hop forward lager it's just really cool that vegetal green, earthy, marijuana just type of finish is just different for a lager. I've had that before in IPAs and other hot forward beers, but in a lager, it's weird because you're, you're, you get the body and mouthfeel you associate with a lager, but then you get a hot profile you associate with an IPA. It's an IPL, but it, it's a different type of IPL. Most IPLs I've ever had just, you know, they're tropical and citrus fruits and stone fruits and things like that. You know, grapefruit, pine, resin. This doesn't have that. The, the finish is really unique and quite tasty. Anyway, um, Revolution and Hot Butchers maintains and shapes. I have no problem giving that a four out of five. It's a really fun, cool, unique, different type of lager. And, you know, you're talking about craft beer nowadays where there are how many? 10,000 breweries basically in the U.S. You know, tens of thousands all over the world. And you look at a beer like this and it's tough to get a hot forward lager that brings something new to the table. And for me, this has brought something new to the table. It's a, a very enjoyable hop forward lager that just, it has, I mean, they just don't have much information, but uh, yeah, it just has a uniqueness to it that I just haven't had from a lager. I don't know how many times I can say that, but it's just kind of blowing me away from that perspective. It's a four out of five. It's a good lager, but just like kind of fucking with my mind. Anyway, uh, price and availability, I have no idea. So if anyone wants to chime in out there, I'd imagine this probably was just in Chicago as, as you know, it's a collaboration. They probably didn't brew a shit ton of it. Um, price point, I have no idea. A beer like this, if you're talking about a four pack, I wouldn't want to see it more than 14 bucks, ideally in the $12 range, $12.99 a four pack. Um, if it's more than that, then a bit pricey for me when it comes to a lager, a sub 6% lager. If you're going over like three, three and a half dollars a can, that's tough for me to pay. But uh, I didn't pay for this one because Butcher was nice enough to send it my way. But if I was to buy this one, I don't think I'd pay more than $14 a four pack. So if anybody out there knows price and availability, I would love to hear it post in the comment section. And if anybody has had this beer, let me know what you think about it because this is a fucking cool little jam. I'm digging it. So uh, appreciate everybody stopping by for another beer review here on the Beer Patrol. Uh, thanks again to Hot Butcher for hooking me up with this one. I'll have the next two uh, reviews out from these guys in the next little while. So stay tuned. Anyway, appreciate everybody stopping by. So the next one. Cheers.